Hello viewers and subscribers. Today we are going to see an important topic from FY as well as SYBSC, practical as well as theory. That is the megascopic sedimentary structures. How you are going to identify the sedimentary megascopic structure in the hand specimen as well as the similar topic will be there in the theory, the sedimentary structures. So, this is a very, very important one and if you want to become a geologist, your basics should be very clear, whether it should be a mineral, it should be a ore mineral, whether it should be a crystallography, whether it should be a uh, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic rock, their structures, textures and paleontology. These are the basic ones where you are going to deal with them regularly when you are going to become the geologist and at the same time when you are going to make the specialization then you have to go but this is the foundation so every student has to have the important understanding about the geological basic things so here today we are going to see a basic uh, practical as well as theory for the megascopic sediment structure I am Dr. Sajid Undekar, Associate Professor, Head of Department of Geology, Pune College of Art, Science, Commerce, CAM, Pune. And this is what we have given in my mobile number as well as email ID. Those who want, they can contact me on this email IDs and uh, those who have any problem, uh, doubts are there, they can write down in the comment section also. Let's start this topic which we have, the sedimentary era. First, basic thing we will see about the sedimentary. Sedimentary rock, we have already taken uh, in the previous uh, uh, videos and it has been uploaded. Those who want to see the, that video, they can go and see that uh, video also. Sedimentary are called as secondary rocks. These secondary rocks are derived from the primary rocks, the pre-exist rock, which may be igneous, it may be a sedimentary or it may be metamorphic rock which may go under regular process in the nature. What are the regular process? That whatever the pre-existing rock is there, it has to expose to the atmosphere. Then geological agents will act on that. Then first one, mechanical weathering, wear and tear has taken place. Then the next one, water in come in contact with this wear and tear material. The final materials, the materials uh, are there, they are dissolved in the water. That is a chemical reaction has taken place. So mechanical weathering, and chemical weathering and with the geological agent there will be a transportation. So that is the erosion, whatever the material which has been weathered, uh, that particular in-situ rock, from there it has been transported to some other place with the geological agents. So wind, water, surface running water, glacier, these are the agents which are there which carrying the material from one place to other. So, the uh, transportation will be called as the with, uh, erosion in place in a cycle. One, second time, third year, say example 2021, 2021 again eroded, 20, uh, 2022 again eroded. So it is in a cyclic process is there, the erosion has taken place, then that process will be called as a denudation. So there will be mechanical, chemical weathering, erosion, transport, erosion, denudation that is comes under these two are comes under the transportation. During the transportation, there is a collision, attrition, abrasion. They are co collide with each other. They collide with the bed rocks. Saltation, traction, saltation has taken place. So as that sediments are travel a longer distance, wear and tear is always taking place with each other as well as with the bed rock. So transportation. After the transportation, as soon as the velocity of that agent has decreased then whatever the heavy material is there, they will settle down. So whatever the material which is carried by these geological agents, they have been divided into three categories. First one, bed load. The heavy material just they rolling, traction and saltation, jump, again roll, jump, roll, jump, roll. So they are jumping will be there. So traction and saltation is there. So these are called as bed load. Next one, those material which are floating into the water, they are the suspended particle. And third one, which material which is dissolved in, in the water, this is the dissolved. So dissolved, suspended and bed load. So they are there, they have been transported as soon as velocity decreases, heavier material will first settle down, then the final totally water stagnant, 
then suspended part will settle down and slowly there will be a precipitation will taken place from that water and whatever material which is dissolved chemical reaction has taken place and the material will be settled down so this is the way the deposition has taken place in the normal normal environment if there is animal or plant has there it will be deposited with that sediment or anything will be there and due to that your in this sedimentary rock we are going to get the variation of color various colors are there right from black brown gray yellow all colors but in igneous rock we don't have the color light medium and dark lithographic mesocratic melanocratic but here in this case these are the phenomena which has taken place in the normal one and due this we are going to make out that here we get the all color when you are going to write this particular description in the bigger sedimentary rocks color we are not going to write down so this is what we have the weathering process what we have done erosion is that the sliding will all this will be already taken is now the very important one sedimentary rock cover the most of the part of the continent and that is the 73% of the earth's surface, current land surface has been covered by the sedimentary rock and if you make out the total contribution of the sedimentary rock it is estimated to 8% of the total volume of the crust if you make out the total volume of the crust only 8% but on the surface it is maximum 73% is there of the sedimentary rock and sedimentary rock is not thinner veneer covering the inner part which contain the igneous and metamorphic rock and sedimentary rocks are deposited in a layering so there is the bedding will be there structure we are going to get the bedding so the bedding bottom bedding plane and top bedding plane in between this there is the thickness of the bed so that we are going to make out the so sedimentary structures which are there that provides all the information which will be required and once uh, if you want to construct uh, any civil engineering project like uh, you want to construct uh, national highways or a building has to construct tunnel has to prepare canal has to prepare or any roadways which have been made for this wherever the sedimentary rocks are exposed we want to test the their strength energy which are the rocks which are there what will be the feasible what should be we take the foundation so that it should not be fall down if uh, any earthquake is going to happen so that how will be that will be a study has to be taken strength we have to find out what is the mechanical strength of that particular rock is there so sedimentary rock we also get uh, coal that is a fossil fuel drinking water oats we are going to get out this is what we have the process how this sedimentary rock has been formed first mechanical weathering then chemical weathering erosion transportation deposition cementation and compaction so these are the process which are there they are going to give you a rock that is called a secondary rock and that is the sedimentary one and this is again we are going to see in this structure also because this is a very very important one how you are going to classify the igneous uh, sedimentary rock sedimentary rock are broadly divided into two category non transported and transported means wherever the weathering has taken place mechanical weathering or chemical weathering after the chemical whatever the material dissolved water has carried out at higher altitudes or other whichever the place which are there so from there what is happening whatever the residue is remaining which was which was not transported that uh, material is uh, cemented and compacted giving you a secondary rock then that we called as a residual type because weathering has taken place mechanical weathering chemical weathering has taken place material is dissolved and carried out the suspended particle which carried out and rest of the residue which is remaining over there will be going to give you a rock and that is called as residual type of deposit so here when you are going to write the classification sedimentary non transported residual type of deposit and from there already we have studied laterite and bauxite come to the next one the material which is transported as a bed load or suspended or dissolved they have been uh, div divided now on the on the basis of sedimentary transported in suspension now whichever the material which has been suspended depending upon the grain size we have been divided into the three categories first one rudaceous where a rock sedimentary rock contain 
contain copper, pebble, gravels which are there. Its grain size is very coarse, 64 mm to 4 mm. So that is the rudaceous type. And in that we are going to have the conglomerate and breccia. What is the difference between the conglomerate and breccia? Conglomerate is a grains, the pebble which are there more or less rounded. Outline is very smooth. But in case of breccia, it is a angular, sharp angular edges. That means that the both the pebbles which are going to found in the conglomerate and breccia give you a geological significance that the breccia travel a shorter distance as compared to the conglomerate. Conglomerate has travel a longer distance. So due to this attrition, abrasion has taken place and due to this the sharp edges have been polished and rounded pebbles have been found. So conglomerate will be a uh, rounded one and breccia will be angular uh, sediments are there, the pebbles are there. The next one where the arenaceous type, where it is a sand, the nature 2 mm less than 2 mm is there. So sand particle and in that depending upon the sand we have three types of uh, rocks we have. One sandstone, then orthos and green. Then in the sandstone also we have calcareous sandstone, ferrogenous sandstone, yes, so will be there. So they will be depending upon which cementing material is there in that sandstone. So sandstones contain 100% sand particles, gravels, uh, sand particles are there or papers, sand particles or sediments are there which are cemented with the cementing material and that will be a sandstone. Now in this sandstone if the grain size is coarse, coarse sand sediments are there then that will be called as a grit. Sand is a very fine and grit is a very coarse, nothing difference. But difference comes over here in the arcos. In that arcos, out of the 100% what we have the sand, in this arcos, 75% is the sand and 25% is the feldspar and that is particularly the orthoclase. And due to that, the color of that arcos will become the reddish one. So when you're going to write down the uh, classification for Sandstone, orcos and grit will write down sedimentary, transported, in suspension, arenaceous type of deposit, whether it is sandstone, orcos and grit. Similar one, the next category is the argillaceous, where the material is very fine. We could not see with our own eyes, but they have been mechanical breakdown has taken place. They are not gone under chemical weathering. So, rudaceous, arenaceous, argillaceous. These are there where mechanical breakdown has taken place. In the argillaceous, the first rock we have the mudstone, like a muddy particle, yes, where we have the mud, which is color will be look like as a mud, so that will be called as a mudstone. Second one is the shell, where we have the shells are there, so mudstone and shell. So, these are the argillaceous, sedimentary, transported, in suspension, argillaceous type of deposit. Come to the next category where the transported material is in solution. In this, the whatever the material which is dissolved in the water, once the water becomes the stagnant, then whatever the material which has been uh, uh, suspended, they first settle down, then whichever the material which is there in, in the dissolved material, they will start precipitating and making a chemical reaction and material has been deposited. So, that type is called as chemical deposit. So here, limestone and calcopa, we could write down as sedimentary transported in solution, chemical type of deposit for limestone and calcopa. And the last one category from here is the organic deposit, sedimentary transported organic deposit in solution, organic type of deposit. So at the time of chemical deposit, if any plant or animal is there, it is deposited and this fossil has been formed. So there we can write down sedimentary transported in solution, organic type of deposit, fossiliferous limestone, silicious, uh, uh, pneumolytic limestone, oolitic limestone. So whichever based on the fossil, we have the name. So this is the way we are going to have the classification. Yes, that is the what we have, the sediments, particle, gravel, what we are going to make out. Fossil will be there, which will be there. 75% area will be covered, yes, so that we have seen the rocks, which are the sedimentary rocks, which are found, they are in a sequence, one above the other, sequence vertically as well as horizontally, they are there in the sequence. 
several startups are there depending upon the forces which are there we are going to get the coding coding which will be going to make out so now the first simple first structure which is there that is the lamination so here what we have you can see here the bed yes this is one bed this is another yes so beddings are there and this bedding will be differentiated so thickness you can measure out so horizontal one if the thickness of the bed is less than 1 mm 1 cm then it is called as a lamine and that structure which is there it is called as the lamination so here the first simple one which we have is the structure which is there the lamination so here you can see if this very clear one so you can see the alternate black and white we have the layers are there so lamination is there so the first one lamination but in the bedding we have a two types of bedding one is parallel bedding you can show i'll show you the rock the sedimentary rock which is found in the layering so here the photograph which we have shown the beds are deposited in one above the other so that is the parallel bedding so this is the parallel bedding so in fibsc you are going to have the parallel bedding a map is there you can draw the section along the map so you can get the bedding which are, which will be the idea so the lamination where the thin material is there second one is current bedding or cross bedding where within the bed with the currents whatever the material which is deposited with the current they carried out and they deposited so they show you the current directions so the crossing will be there the beds are cross each other and cross bedding which has been taken place so here we called as cross several strata lamine make a bed and deposit it and as the current comes the material will be carried out and they will be deposited along the current and that is going to cross each other so that will give you a cross bedding or current bedding another example you can see now the best one yes here we have the best one yes we have the cross the beds are cross each other so cross bedding or current bedding so that will give you the indication that there will be a uh, uh, environmental uh, how the beds uh, are deposited what will be the water current is there basically the texture if you make out there will be two type of texture plastic and non plastic plastic means those sediments which we are going to see with your own eyes they are gone under only mechanical weathering breakdown has taken place and they are cemented with the cementic material then it is called as plastic one that is the we have uh, conglomerate breccia sandstone or coarse grit then mudstone and shell these are what we have seen the rocks they are the plastic texture non plastic where there is a chemical reaction has taken place at the time of deposition there is a change in the composition of pre existing rock from where the material has brought out so that is called as non plastic or it is called as affinity yes that is called as affinity or non plastic so there will be there that part will be there yes so that is a uh, what we are going to have the structure will going to see the the sedimentary environment they going to give you the environment this there is a layering which is there is horizontal beds one above the other so bedding is there uniform bedding layering is there that we are going to make out sequence they one above the another there if the thickness is less than few centimeters then that is the lamina or lamination so here we have seen the lamination is very clear this yes, cross bedding just we have seen the cross bedding each other is yes, this is a cross bedding again we have been seen is yes, the lamination thin one thin bed again i have shown you the parallel bedding is there is yes, again the warways thin thickness which is less than millimeter warways and these are the very important one and these are deposited in short dura duration and uh, show you the changes no changes which are taken place they have been recorded in that particular uh, warways we are going to make out graded bedding is yes, the material which is deposited once the water water whatever the uh, water is carried out and as soon as velocity decreases heavy material first settle down then the final then the final then the, and the whole thing has been deposited water becomes stagnant now the finer material which are dissolved in the water gets preserved so there is a gradation from the bottom to the top if it comes out the grade size is go on increasing or if you go from the top to the bottom grain size will be increasing and that give you the gradation and that indicates that wherever we get the coarse material in the field 
we got a sample and it has got the grain bedding so with this we can find out that wherever we got a coarser side that is the older one and whichever the finer sediments are there that is the younger one so this is what we have from the bottom if you go to the top there is the finer sediments are deposited so here i can see a uh, coarse sediments will be there and as you go upper side finer and finer sediments will be are uh, deposited that again gives you the sequence turbulence will be which have been formed in the water that has been given next one ripple marks are uh, a uh, wave will, like uh, appearance will be there so the surface of the bed will be called as bed form and if a uh, material either at a stagnant at a bottom level just with the floating whatever the material which is deposited a uh, wave like with the wave there comes out and they settle down a uh, wave like a pattern has been deposited and this is what we called as the ripple marks and these ripple marks are the symmetrical one in this category and there is if there is a change in the direction of the current then we are going to get the asymmetrical ripples so we going to have the symmetrical and asymmetrical both the samples we have in our lab so we i am going to show you this both one so ripple marks form in the flowing water and there are two types that is symmetrical and asymmetrical yes this is a sample showing you the asymmetrical one this is a symmetrical one next one mud crack or sun crack if you just pour a water into the soil what happens the whatever the molecules of the soils are there in between the water molecule is there and once the water has started evaporating from there the two particles are contract and now due to this what's happening whatever water is evaporated the cracks have been developed and these cracks are preserved as it is in this to this soil then you are going to get the cracks then these are called as mud cracks because they have been formed in the mud and they are formed due to the sun heating is there and water is evaporating drying is there from that particular surface and due to that the cracks have been formed shrinkage has been taken place and due to the shrinking perpendicular crack will be developed and if we can place and the crack will be developed and if it will be irregular and a uh, hexagonal or conical shape whichever the shape will be there that that crack will be developed and if we, as it is then it is called as mud crack or sun crack so this is the way so whatever we are going to see the structures in the sediment rock we have seen i hope this uh, video will help you to clear your concept about the megascopic sedimentary structures those who require or want more information they can write in the comment section about what you want from me or what exactly you are not understand from this particular video i hope this is clear thank you have a nice day